The Ohio High School Athletic Association proudly presents Varsity Hockey as the Troy Trojans host the St. Xavier Bombers. Hello everybody and welcome inside Hobart Arena. I am JT Zabo and tonight's hockey game is sure to be one for the record books as the Trojans continue one of the best starts to a season that this program has seen in nearly 10 years. As tonight the Bombers come in for a non-conference matchup between the Trojans here inside the historic Hobart Arena. Of course, tonight along the banks of the Great Miami River in downtown Troy, it is first responder night here in Troy as the Trojans welcome fire, rescue, EMS, and law enforcement inside the building. My name is JT Zabo as we get set to go the opening face-off here at center ice the trojans in their home white uniforms well skate inside the zone as we continue underway just a few technical issues to work out as they'll work it back inside the trojans end Play inside the zone as that's going to be stopped by Noah Carver. And he will wisely hold on. As again, we welcome you inside the historic Hobart Arena for tonight's varsity matchup. As the faceoff one. Back out to neutral ice. Played ahead. Now here come the Trojans the other way. Big head of steam out to center ice as they'll work it back into the corner. Played back in. Scooped up by the Trojans out from behind the net as Lombardo couldn't get much on it, but he'll hold on to the puck. Down low off this centering pass, picked up by St. X, and out they come. With a head of steam, they'll get a change, and it's down inside the zone as Noah Carver makes a save. Rebound. Right wing to the left side, and that one holds in at the line. Still playing out. And icing is the signal, icing the call now to stop the clock with 13.46 to go in this first period. Again, glad to have everybody along for this one here on the Troy Ohio TV network on Facebook, Instagram, and of course, YouTube, as this one works out to center ice. Played ahead all the way down. We'll work it down low in from behind the net. Still there into the corner. Battling forward, here's the centering feed. Sexton had a piece of it, but now here come the Bombers the other way. Still controlling the puck. Still work it through. Still working some technical issues here with our first broadcast with the new system. Still playing it deep into the far corner. Still battling along the wall. Trying to play it free. Out they come with it. That one back inside the corner. Scooped up by the Bombers. As they'll work it on this breakout attempt through center ice. Intercepted back inside the Trojans end. And forced back up the wall. Now up to center they come. Stymied at the red stripe. They'll force that one right back inside Bombers territory. And here comes St. Xavier the other way with a dump in. Way just inside the zone as it's scooped up by the Trojans on the half ball. And a big open ice check knocks that one out to center ice. Centering feed intended, down low. Couldn't get much on it as Wenning played it. Back out to the point, there's a shot right on. Turned aside by the goaltender Joey Rusnak, starting netminder for the Bombers tonight as here come the Bombers the other way. Across the Trojan line, they'll put that one just wide. Back on the far wing. Held on, and again around the Dashers, back into the corner. Laid out on this breakout attempt by the Trojans. They'll work it ahead deep inside Bombers territory. 
gets it back on the half wall as they'll play it on a centering feed and that one's going to be up and out of play for a stoppage now with 11.31 to go a pretty end-to-end -end start to this hockey game between the Trojans and the Bombers As that one works back to Burghardt at the point, there's a shot right on. Rusnak played it wide, back to the right wing. And out they come. Big head of steam out to center ice. Across the Trojan line, three wide. They'll work it back in as Carver turns it aside. Rebound around to the corner. Scoop back up. There's a centering pass turned aside again. As that one all the way back into the near corner. Off the end boards, this one will make its way. Back to the Trojans line, still battling for it down low as that one escapes out to neutral ice momentarily. For it's scooped back up by the Bombers, now too wide at the Trojans line. They'll work it back in as that one played out from behind Noah Carver and wrapped around by Harris. Up the near wall. Now for Gavin Burris who puts on the brakes top of the circle near side. He's just going to skate it out himself and decide where he's going to go with it, almost like he's setting up a power play, but it is even strength as the Trojans will just dump it in for a wholesale change with 10 minutes and 27 seconds to go. As here's Cooper Sexton, a centering feed. Couldn't get much on it. Right back out in front for Francis. Not as that one was turned aside by Rusnak. And now here come the Bombers back the other way. Across the Trojan line, they'll work it deep inside the zone. Big hit on the half boards, right wing side. Almost 10 minutes even to go here in the opening period. Still scoreless from Hobart Arena if you're just joining us on Troy, Ohio TV. That one's going to go up into the protective mesh, and we will get a stoppage now with 9.58 to go here in the first period. As the fans continue to trickle inside the building for first responder night here at Hobart. A good, healthy crowd on hand tonight. As we're still working out some bugs. Appreciate you sticking with us tonight. As the Trojans back the other way, inside the Bombers end. Forced it ahead, St. Xavier with a high shot. That one turned aside by Carver, and he will wisely hold on. Now to stop the clock with 9.32. 5-2, to the shots on goal at this point in favor of the Bombers. As the Trojans able to clear that one again. Back out they go as they race for it inside the Bombers end. Around the Dashers on the near corner. Played at the boards. Still trying to control as they'll battle for it down low off the high glass. There's Gabby Path. She'll get it up to the point as Condi holds on at the line. He'll send it right back for Path. Condi again. Using that hand-eye coordination to hold on to the puck, he'll maintain it and send it back inside the zone as the Trojans now will get a line change under nine minutes to go here in this opening period from Hobart. As a long stretch pass is gonna make it all the way down inside the Trojans' end. Fight again. They'll work it all the way back inside the Bombers end. Neutral ice, right ahead. As Berghardt back inside his own zone to play it. He'll send it up the near wing in front of the Bombers bench. Still holding on to it. Here comes St. Xavier the other way now, stepping across the blue stripe. They'll work it down low. Still trying to control as it's picked back up by the Bombers in a drive, glove down by Noah Carver who had the shot all the way. And he's able to stop the clock now with eight minutes and seven seconds to go. And the draw right away, lost all the way back. Inside the 
Bomber zone, that's gonna hit off a skate. They're gonna whistle it down for icing, and icing will be the call. And that'll give the Trojans an opportunity to settle the puck down a little bit for a face-off inside their own attacking zone. Here's Brady Smith to take the draw for the Trojans as it's scooped up by St. Xavier. But picked up by Smith, shoot, save made by Raznick. Here's the rebound up and out of the protective mesh. And a close call right there as Brady Smith thought he had an easy one. Can a corn goal absolutely robbed by Joey Raznick. Netminder for St. Xavier. And so the Trojans reset. Back on the point, here's a bouncing puck, makes it all the way back to Ian Francis in the zone. He takes an awkward bounce into the boards, but gets back into play as there's a shot. Rebound knocked away at the last second. Francis back behind the net. One touch pass, back at the point. Harris gets it back down low for Sexton who takes a tumble, and they'll work it again. Back out to neutral ice. Touched up off sides, and that's exactly what they're gonna call it, off sides to stop the clock with seven minutes and eight seconds to go. Here in this scoreless first period from the historic Hobart Arena, if you're just joining us here tonight on Troy Ohio TV, I am JT Zabo, glad to have you along for the ride. As the Trojans looking to make two wins in as many nights here after a big road win last night against Sylvania Southview in Toledo. Seven to three was the final score last night. As the play comes out through neutral ice, that one's gonna be whistled off sides as it was played by the netminder and they'll bring that one back to neutral ice. And again, a big road win last night and this is perhaps the first real test of this hockey club. Three games in three nights Actually, less than 72 hours when you factor in Sunday afternoon's matinee tomorrow night against Bishop Watterson. As that one played at the line, here come the Bombers back the other way. With a head of steam out from behind the net. There Schumann plays it around the Dashers. Trojans trying to make it two in a row against the Bombers here tonight as they'll battle down low out from behind the net. Clearing pass by Path, knocked away by the Bombers. They'll work it back into the corner. Stripped away at the last second, turned aside as that shot from Sweeney was knocked into the high glass on the half boards and that's held in by the Bombers. No hand pass called as they'll play it back down low. Still right there. And again, they'll force that one away. Last second battle, here's Gabby Path out from behind her own net. Still battling down low with the loose puck. Trying to control the puck and finally, referee's gonna have some mercy on her as the play back out. Picked back up by the Trojans and they're just gonna ice it 185 feet the other way. And icing is the call and that was almost to get us out of here, coach. That's exactly what they were saying. They were hemmed inside their own defensive zone for so long at the tail end of their shift. They had nowhere else to go except for a relief valve. And that's exactly what they had as the draw won quickly and scooped up by Noah Carver. And he's going to hold on now with 5 minutes and 32 seconds to go here in this opening period. Still scoreless from Hobart. As the draw again, right back to Noah Carver. He's gonna hold on again. And so that one. As they play it back, Carver holds on to a point blank shot and he is gonna hold on Five minutes and 17 seconds to go. And so the play coming out back the other way. Here's a breakaway for Gavin Burris, all by himself and made the save. 
Williams. They'll play it again for Lombardo. Here's a centering feed. Tried to get a piece of Harris. Couldn't get much on it. And so play continues for the Bombers as they'll work it out of their own zone. Big head of steam across the line. As that one put back, Carver didn't know where it was. In fact, it went up and out of play. And that'll stop the... That'll stop the clock with four minutes and 47 seconds to go. Not talking. And so they'll work it back inside the zone. Here's the play. Works it all the way back inside the other bomber's zone. Goaltender had it. And he will wisely hold on at the last second before this one having some scary moments there if you're the Bombers as Rusnak didn't know exactly where the puck was at that moment. It was tucked up on the side of the cage. And so luckily for him, he was able to hold on. As Smith battles on the near side boards. Bring it down low. Here come the Bombers the other way. Big head of steam. They'll work it back inside the zone. And back the other way. Here's Brady Smith with a breakaway. Shoot, rebound. Rusnak the save. Loose puck out in front. Trojans shoot and score! And just like that, the Trojans making a one nothing hockey game. Thanks to, we're gonna say it was Brady Smith. We're gonna wait for the official word. Let's go downstairs now for the call. They are gonna give it credit to Cooper Sexton. Smith almost picked up a second one there on that rebound attempt. Here come the Bombers stopped up at center ice as the Trojans having a little bit of offensive power here in the later minutes of the first period. one nothing now, Trojans in the lead as the Bombers try to clear their zone. They cannot. That one held in by Wedding. He'll work it back down low as Barnes is out to help. And now here come the Bombers back the other way, deep inside the Trojan territory as that's going to be scooped up by number 20, Brady Campbell. Campbell out from his own zone. He's going to play it on the half boards, left wing side. Off a bounce pass, kept in by the Bombers. Trojans regroup, and they'll send that one out. Icing is signaled, but it's waved off as it's going to make it inside the St. Xavier zone. Big hit there by Barnes, but it does knock the puck loose. They'll play it ahead deep inside the Trojans' end. Still battling on the boards is Berghardt. Out to center he comes. Takes a big open ice hit there as Harris is knocked off the puck. And now here come the Bombers back the other way. Right ahead, here's Harris. Couldn't get much on it. Forced back by the Bombers. And he shoots and scores. Well, that wasn't exactly what we wanted to see. The Bombers answer back with a goal of their own at the 2.15 mark here of this opening period. Their 11th shot on goal is enough for the first goal for the Bombers. We'll go downstairs momentarily to Roger Mumpower for the official word. As we'll work it down low. There's Lombardo. Takes a big hit and gets the puck loose. And so they're going to give it to Jack Davis for the Bombers on the goal call. And so they'll play it back down low into the corner. Again, forced back. 
off the short glass. This one's going to carry him out to center where it's held on by Berghardt, and that shot right on, turned aside by Raznak. He'll send it back to the point. As the loose puck into the slot, knocked away again with Davis hitting it off the short boards all the way down now. An icing call will stop the clock with a minute 23 to go here in this first period. And so right off the draw, here's Gavin Burris. He was looking for where he was gonna pass that one. Didn't exactly have a good option as the Trojans will battle for it on their offensive line before it's scooped up by the Bombers. Out to center they come as they'll stymie at the Trojans line before it's scooped back up by Burris. Here he comes out to center with a big shot right on. Trojans will finish their line change as the Bombers. Work that one ahead out to center and a big check right there knocks it inside Trojan territory where it's picked up by Colin Berghardt. Wrapped around the Dashers. Still playing it on the far side. He'll hit it off the Dashers again. And scoop back. Played it ahead. Still battling it down low. Here's the centering pass picked up by Burris. Couldn't get much on it. As the Bombers attempted a shot, here's a weird loose puck and the Trojans just absolutely gassed at the tail end of their shift. Try to get a piece of that one on a line change here. Sexton a drive as it's played again. And if nothing else, we're all getting dizzy upstairs here too. They say artificial intelligence is the future, but I don't know. I'm not so impressed tonight. And so 15 minutes of hockey is in the books. The Trojans and the Bombers all tied up at one. When we come back, we'll have second period action from Hobart Arena. This is Troy Trojans Hockey on the Trojan Hockey Network.
Welcome back inside the historic Hobart Arena as we rejoin you in play. The St. Xavier Bombers just started this period with a goal as we go downstairs for the official word from Roger Mumpower. Sweeney will get credit for the goal. Just a minute into this second period, it is a 2-1 hockey game in favor of St. Xavier as we welcome you back along the banks of the Great Miami River here in downtown Troy for a hockey night in Troy. A little Saturday night action as the Trojans and the St. Xavier Bombers battling down low. Still battling into the far corner. They'll play it up on the near wing. Bombers cannot clear into their own zone. Finally up to the half boards they go as the bouncing puck waved off of the offsides. And that one's going to chip up and out of play into the protective bench. Now for a stoppage as we inch our way into the middle stanza. Of course, this is the middle hockey game of the weekend for the Trojans. 12.40 to go. Trojans with a big road win last night in Toledo against Sylvania Southview. Looking to extend that to 2-0 for the weekend tonight against the Bombers. As they'll play it down low inside St. Xavier territory. Still there. Wrapping it around the Dashers. Out they come to center ice. As a big open ice check knocked it loose. And we're going to get a delayed penalty. And it's going to go against the Trojans. Into the box is number four. Cooper Sexton, he's going to get a tripping penalty now with 11.55 to go here in the second period. And that'll be the first power play of the night for either club. And so the Trojans now facing the penalty kill unit as Gavin Burris will be out to take the draw for the Trojans. One back to Colin Burkhardt as he gets chipped off the puck. Loose puck knocked away at the last second as that one across the crease. And so play back inside the bomber zone. Skating it out of his own end. Big centering pass at the Trojans line. They'll work it back in and a shot off a shin pad of Gavin Burns down low. They'll regroup, top of the circle. Hit off a couple sticks in front, almost like a pinball, as they'll play it again. Back to the point, held on. Right back out from behind the net into the corner. They'll play it there. Battling it on the half boards. Here's Gavin Burris, just flips it 185 feet the other way. Of course, Hobart with the short ice surface, 185 feet long, as opposed to the NHL standard 200 the Bombers are used to playing on down in Cincinnati. And so they'll work it back into the far corner. Still there, battling out from behind the net. 14 to 14, the shots on goal are even at this point. It's Connie will work it off a backhand ahead. And it's the captain, Cam Lombardo, is able to send it all the way down. Scoop back up as Brady Smith battling for it down low. He'll work it back to the half boards as Francis couldn't control it. Now here come the Bombers the other way. Offside signaled, played it at the line, and a big open ice check there, knocked it loose at the last second. A wraparound attempt, he shoots and scores! And that'll even this hockey game at two apiece on the 15th shot, a short-handed goal. We'll tie this hockey game at two. As they play it on the half boards, Bombers pick it up. As 
Ian Francis not will get credit for the goal. Condi with the assist. That was in a short-handed goal. First of the weekend, and now here come the Trojans back the other way. Here's Brady Smith, gets hooked up, no call, and he takes a hard bounce into the boards. Smith battling up from behind the net, the loose puck knocked away out through the slot. Good hard work there by the Trojans, but it does meander all the way back out at their own blue line as they force it in. Scoop back up by Smith. He'll put that in as it's gloved down by Rasnick on the side of his cage, and now here come the Bombers the other way. Head of steam and across the Trojan line in on side. There's a shot, rings just off the end boards. Rebound picked up. This time by Cooper Sexton as they'll work it free. Back out to neutral ice. And that one's gonna be up and out of play for a stoppage now with 8.53 to go. And that kind of stopped some of the flow that we had been seeing as the Trojans answering with a goal of their own to make it a 2-2 hockey game. They're gonna spot the face off still in the neutral zone as referee Jarrell Kindop was trying to figure out exactly where it was gonna go. And indeed, that's where they put it. And so the Trojans inside the Bombers end. There's a shot, hard angle off the side of the cage. Rebound back to Lombardo, a shot high. Didn't get much on it. And St. Xavier works it up the boards. There's a shot right on. That one played by Campbell. As the bouncing puck comes all the way out to neutral ice, Trojans will regroup back in their own zone before sending it inside the St. Xavier end, giving chase now number 24, Eli Wenning. On the four check, eight minutes and 15 seconds to go. Here come the Bombers out of their own zone. Back out to Trojan territory where we'll send it quickly cross ice and back inside the zone as we settle in a little bit here. Playing a little more defensive as now we're back to an even hockey game. Work back into the far corner. As Berghart works it ahead. Out to neutral ice. Now here comes Gavin Burris with a head of steam. Had his pocket picked at the last second and the Bombers are actually gonna catch the Trojans on a line change but they're gonna say it was an offsides, and so the Trojans getting lucky with one there with 7.42 to go. And so the draw will be right out in center ice. Here comes Andrew Condy. Back for the Bombers as they'll work it inside the zone. Turned aside by Carver. They'll work it ahead. Big hit off. Trojans try to clear in dues. That one picked up by Luke Harris. Out to Bomber territory it goes. Out from behind goaltender Joey Rasnick as they'll work it back into the near corner. Still battling down low is Gabby Paff. She'll force it around as the loose puck. Is anybody going to be there? But no, as it finally squirts out to neutral ice. Trojans regroup out in the neutral zone as Paff sends it on the near side. Can't get much on it as they'll work it back to the far wing. Played out from behind the net as here's Gabby Paff with it. Sends it on the half boards but gives it away at the point momentarily before it's scooped back up by Will Barnes. Here's Barnes at his own line, drops it back. Can't get much on it as there's the centering pass. Loose puck by Harris. Finally gobbled up in the last second, and that'll stop the clock now with six minutes and 37 seconds. And so that one will play back down inside the zone. Six minutes and 37 seconds. 19 to 16, the shots on goal favoring the Trojans now. We had seen it kind of even right from the start of this hockey game, but the last maybe five or so minutes, the Trojans have really stepped up the offense. And so they'll play it off the far side, but here come the Bombers out to center. Right back in as the Trojans will continue to tag up inside their own zone. Wrapped back around the Dashers. Scooped up by the Trojans as they'll play it again. 
And around to the left side. Here's Berghardt. Holds it in with a backhander. That one's going to be touched up with a hand pass. And Darrell Kindop was right there to make the call. Hand pass stops the clock with six minutes and four seconds to go. And that will bring the faceoff all the way back inside the Trojans' end. Not exactly the, the best situation for the Trojans as the Bombers win the draw back to the point. Tries a fan shot, bouncing puck back off the high glass and around the Dashers as they'll play it out from behind the trapezoid. Carver hugging the post as they'll work it back around. Played it up to the point. Big open ice check there on Sexton. Keeps it in at the line as Brady Smith has the puck down low and wraps it around the Dashers now for Francis Knott. He notched the tying goal here in this second period as he works it ahead. Played now up the wing as the Trojans continue to pressure inside the bomber zone before it comes all the way down. Icing signaled, but it's waved off at the last second as we approach five minutes to go here in the middle stanza. That one's scooped up and held in by St. Xavier as they'll fire it deep into the left wing corner. With a hard angle shot, that one knocked away. And Francis not getting hit off the puck and the Bombers taking their sweet time to get onside. And they finally do as play continues. Out from behind Noah Carver is the junior netminder. Picked up the win between the wickets last night, trying to do the same tonight. As here come the Trojans back the other way with a head of steam. Smith gets rubbed off the puck. No call from behind the play despite the fans really wanting one. Sexton picks up the slack right back to Smith. A shot hit the post. Rebound to the left side and Cooper Sexton goes crashing into the net. And there is a delayed penalty coming from behind the play. As the Bombers will be getting a penalty on the play as the referee Jarrell Kindop signaling interference against number 11, Colin Custer. And so the Trojans now will have their first power play of the night with 4.28 to go here in the second period. With the man advantage here, Smith back on the D. Sends that one just wide. Back for Berghardt who chips it in on this low cycle for Burris. Brings it back to the half board, centering feed. Loose puck, couldn't get it on his stick and finally we get a whistle as the net was knocked off at the last second. As we hear Roger Mumpower with the official word downstairs, a very close call right there as the Trojans tried to get goaltender Joey Rasnick moving from side to side and they'll win the draw back to the point. Here's Smith. Played it back into the corner now for Gavin Burris with a head of steam out from behind the net. He'll set up on this power play. Sends it rink wide, back for Lombardo, hits off a skate in front, didn't have much of a shot, so he'll wrap it back to behind the net before the Trojans nearly cough this one up in through the slot. Smith with a shot, loose puck, hit away off the blocker pad of Rusnak, and the Bombers forced to ice this one the length of the ice as Noah Carver will play it out, nearly getting checked off the puck, he'll make the save, rebound, Picked back up by Smith, and now here come the Trojans. Still on the power play, three wide at the line. Smith, a big spin move, got a piece of the goaltender Resnick, but no call, as that one back all the way inside Trojan territory. End-to-end -end hockey here on the power play for another 41 seconds and counting, but good forechecking on the penalty kill for the Bombers. Here's Miles Schumann, 3-0-1 to go here in the second period as they'll work it Back inside the Bombers' end. There's a big shot turned aside by Rusnick. They'll work it back. Trojans finish their line change. And now here comes a two-on-one the other way for the Bombers. Deep inside Trojan territory as they try to clear it out at the line and finally do. Back for Cooper Sexton with the puck. Dangles it in through the slot. Couldn't get the shot off in time. And so with four seconds and counting on the penalty, 
to the Bombers. That one's going to go down now for an icing call. Stopping the clock with 2 minutes and 20 seconds to go. And so we'll do this one again with Smith. I said the net was knocked off again. As it's played back at the point, Carver's going to paddle it aside. Also work it free on the half boards. Finally cleared the length of the ice. Icing signaled. And icing the call again to stop the clock with just over two minutes to go here in this second period. Twos all across the big board, hanging 32 feet above the ice here at Hobart Arena as icing the call now. Brings the faceoff back inside the Trojan zone on the stick side of Noah Carver. And right off the draw, this one's going to be picked back up by Campbell who wraps it around now for Sexton and a big head of steam two on one for the Trojans here Smith gets rubbed off the puck still trying to control it back at the point intercepted at the slot loose pocket in front redirected at the last second shoots and scores And the Trojans retake the lead. We'll go downstairs momentarily to Roger Mumpower for the official word. As Brady Smith will get credit for the goal. And Ian Francis now will pick up his second point of the night off that assist to make it a 3-2 hockey game as they'll work it down low. Into the corner, scoop back up, down low. Here's Wedding, trapping it against the Dashers, giving a little assistance to Gavin Burris. Off the boards, this one out to center ice, scooped up momentarily, but the Trojans couldn't hold on, and this one will clear all the way back down inside their own zone. And off a skate, and now here comes Berghardt the other way. That one's going to be scooped up this time by Dawes. For the Bombers, and out they come on this outlet pass with a big open ice check there, but it wasn't enough as Davis a drive. And that one right into the breadbasket of goaltender Noah Carver to stop the clock with just 36.4 seconds to go here in this second period. And so right from the draw, we're going to do this one again as it was hit into the goaltender's paraphernalia. Just a couple tenths of a second ticking off the clock on that play. And right from the draw, it's scooped up by Sexton. Here's the outlet pass. Play down to neutralize. Back behind the net. Trying to control. Scooped up again, and that'll be good for an icing call, or will it as it's played by Noah Carver? So icing is waved off. Eight seconds and counting. And so here's Sexton. One last hurrah out through center ice before it's scooped up at the last second. And just like that, 30 minutes of hockey is in the books. The Trojans will skate a one goal lead into the dressing room after two periods. As a three to two lead will propel the Trojans again against a very talented St. Xavier squad tonight from Hobart Arena. When we come back, we'll go downstairs for tonight's player features. 
A couple special guests will join us downstairs in the dressing area as well as a recap of your first two periods, that and more as Troy Trojans Varsity Hockey continues right here on Troy Trojans Hockey Network. Welcome back downstairs. I'm JT Zavo, joined for your intermission with Mason Weaver. And Mason, obviously it's been a, an interesting start to your season. First season varsity after coming to Troy High School. How has it been so far? Honestly, it's been pretty good. Not too bad. It sucks I got hurt the second game. Got hurt the first game. Third game, all right. We've been doing pretty good. Not too bad, but other than that, we've been pretty solid. 
No, obviously stepping into the role that you are transferring from Vandalia Butler. Are a lot of aviators still giving you a little bit of a hard time for that? Yeah, I get a lot of, a lot of crap from a lot of my friends back at, back at Butler, but still get a lot of support from them too. Of course, they are a Miami Valley League program as well, but here in the Swashel, coming in with a big season, how are you rooting for your team so far this season? I'm hoping we do pretty good this year. Um, as I, like I said, I think we're going to be pretty solid as long as we get uh, pucks in deep and shots on net. We'll, be, yeah. we'll do pretty good this year. And, of course, that's the message in the locker room. What are you telling some of the younger guys coming in that look up to you as a role model? Oh, they just they got to watch out for the big boys. they got to keep their heads up and get shots on net. Mason Weaver, any thoughts for the rest of the season once you get healthy and back in the lineup? Nothing really, just hoping for a quick recovery. Brand new Trojan Mason Weaver will be back <laughs> after this. And we welcome you back live inside the historic Hobart Arena as we continue your second intermission. We just had a chat with Mason Weaver downstairs. Coming up here just shortly is backup goaltender Brayson Statton will join us momentarily as we're in the intermission. Of course, the Trojans taking a 3-2 lead into the dressing room after two periods. We're going to send it right back downstairs for that. I'm joined by Trojans goaltender Bryson Staten, and of course, your first season of varsity hockey. You've had a couple games that you've had a chance to adjust to the flow. How has it gone so far? Uh, I sat on the bench for all preseason, played, sat on the bench yesterday kind of watching and studying what Noah does and hopefully I can improve my game. Now when you came into the summer you weren't sure if you were going to make the varsity program. You finally did make the final cut as the backup goaltender. What are some of your goals this season on the varsity squad? Uh, just stay <laughs> with the team, get a lot of wins and get better. <laughs> Now, of course, a big weekend, 3-3. Three and three. There's going to be a couple of those coming up. And, of course, the backup goaltender has to be ready at a moment's notice. What are you doing personally to be ready in any situation? Uh, I'm always getting, staying loose, get, staying focused, getting stretched out, just ready to be on the ice whenever I'm needed. Now, of course, as the backup goaltender, you do get to see a lot of ice from different angles. What are you seeing so far out of your hockey club? Uh, we look pretty good, pretty decent, mm -hmm. uh, pretty steady team here. We get a lot of pucks in deep and shots on net, so we're just we're doing all right, and I'm, I'm liking it here. Bryson Staten, backup goaltender for your Trojans. We'll be back after this. Oh.
And we welcome you live back inside the historic Hobart Arena in downtown Troy as the Trojans skating into the third period with a one goal lead over the St. Xavier Bombers tonight, three to two. As the second intermission continues, Of course, the shots on goal through two periods. Shots on goal 22 to 17 in favor of the Trojans. As they skate onto the ice surface here to start the preparations for here, the third period, of course, the Trojans back at home tomorrow night as they will host a rematch with Columbus rival Bishop Watterson. That game will be right here at Hobart Arena starting at 545. It's a 545 start tomorrow, not a 530. So make sure to mark your calendar. And of course, we'll have live coverage of that game as well right here on Troy Ohio TV, no matter where you choose to watch us, whether you watch us live on Facebook, watch us live on YouTube, or watch us on demand at TroyOhio.tv. Glad to have everybody along for the ride tonight in what's shaping up to be a very exciting third period between these two hockey clubs. And this would be the second win in as many nights if the Trojans can maintain this lead. Of course, we talked last night, the big 7-3 win against the Sylvania Southview Cougars. Let's take a look at some of those highlights from last week in our segment we're calling Last Week in Review. And so the faceoff again. One back to Biddle, a drive. Rebound, Eddie in front, scores! In this second period, the Trojans with a two-man advantage. Take this win, and he scores! As we welcome you back live here inside Hobart Arena, we get set for period number three. We'll have highlights of tonight's game as well as tomorrow night's game posted on our Facebook and Instagram pages starting on Monday. Be sure to like us at Troy Ohio TV on both Instagram and Facebook. Glad to have everybody along for the ride for this one as we get set for period number three. The Trojans in their home white uniforms with the scarlet and gray piping. Once again, skating from right to left on your screen or your web browser, depending on what device you choose to watch this game on. As a last minute goof right there to make sure the door gets shut. We are underway now. 15 minutes up on the big board. And so play continues. As the Trojans will wrap this one back out. And that one's going to be stopped by Noah Carver to stop the clock. We're just about 20 seconds into the second period, uh, third period. What's been a pretty end-to-end -end hockey game so far. And so right from the draw. This one played back inside the zone. Knocked away by the Bombers, and here they come the other way. Out to center ice with a head of steam. They'll work it across the red stripe, where that one is forced inside the zone.
again, trying to hold that one down low. Here come the Bombers. Big outlet pass intercepted right through center. Right shoots, and he tried to pick the corner. Brady Smith, a rebound, loose puck off the side of the cage, knocked away at the last second, as Rudznak was able to make the save. Here's a delayed penalty coming from way behind the play, and that'll stop the clock now with 13.43 to go. And just when you thought he couldn't get enough, he decides to take a penalty too. Here's Brady Smith. A tripping call will put the Bombers back on the power play. And the faceoff will be brought all the way back inside the Trojans' end. And so right from the draw, the power play, their second of the night. Trojans, first goal tonight was actually shorthanded. And so they'll play it down low into the corner. Big hit on Francis Knott. Play continues. Back at the point. Held on by the Trojans as battling down low is Andrew Condi. Controlled it momentarily before this one. Caroms back out to neutral ice and all the way back inside the Bombers end it goes. On this outlet pass out through center ice. Stopped by the Trojans. They'll pick it up at the red stripe and continue pressuring inside the zone as it's turned aside by Resnick. Big collision into the dashers into the far corner as Francis Knott wraps it around to the point. Turned it aside. Now here come the Bombers the other way. Working it aside, a shot into the breadbasket of goaltender Noah Carver. And he will wisely hold on. And again, we uh, probably don't have to tell you at this time, but we are trying out some new automated equipment, so we do appreciate your patience with this broadcast tonight. We're hoping to have all the kinks Worked out in time for tomorrow night's broadcast. And so we do appreciate your help tonight. Being some guinea pigs here on Troy Ohio TV. Here's the shot, turned aside just wide. Rebound back to the near side as it's knocked away in through the slot by Campbell. Back for Lombardo and he's quick to fire it all the way down inside the bomber zone. Played around the Dashers. That nearly got a piece of Gavin Burris. As here come the Bombers back the other way. A shot turned aside, but Carver didn't want to play the rebound. It was too far out. No call on that trip. Both clubs getting some tit for tat out of the way. And wholesale changes for head coach Rick Sabo's club as this one back in for Brady Smith. He'll get his own rebound, turned it aside as Resnick had it. Loose puck, side of the cage, went through the blue paint. As we're going to get some extracurriculars in front of the crease. We may be getting a penalty on this one as well with 11.28 to go. And yes, that's Cooper Sexton skating into the box. But he took someone with him as Henry Doss will get matching minors for their extracurriculars in front of goaltender Joey Rusnak. So he should be playing five on five. And indeed we are as the coincidental minors take effect with 11.28 to go. Off the draw, intercepted by Francis. Not save made Rusnak, rebound off the side of the cage. That one scooped up by the Bombers. Out to center they go, inside Trojan territory. Big hit on the end boards, loose puck knocked away by Carver. A bit of a face wash there in the corner getting uncalled and so the Trojans will have to deal with it. As there's Francis Knott gets it deep inside the Xavier zone. Back on the far side of the boards. Wait out, and here they come out to center ice with a head of steam and across the Trojans line. There's a shot, hit off a skate, loose puck knocked away at the last second by Carver. He had the poke check as it works its way back into the near corner. 
Now here come the Trojans the other way with a head of steam is Smith. Drops it back off now for Francis Knott. Two points already tonight. Back for Smith, centering feed out of the half wall. Drops it back. Smith couldn't get a stick on it in time as the backhander shoots and scores! And the Bombers are not happy with that goal as they felt there probably was some goaltender interference. Not happy from the Xavier bench right there at all. But nonetheless, the Trojans now taking a two goal lead. Brady Smith gets credit for the goal. Francis Knott picks up his third point of the night. One goal and two assists. As they'll work it back into the far wing corner. Banner night for Brady Smith so far. Also for Ian Francis Knott. As here come the Trojans out to center ice. Racing for it, delayed penalty coming. And that's gonna go against the Trojans from way behind the play. As that was number 25, Jack Davis was tripped from way behind. And so slashing is going to be the call against Gavin Burris. Then the faceoff will come back inside the Trojans' end. Not the best penalty at all if you're head coach Rick Zabo to haul a guy down without the puck right in the neutral zone. Everybody in the building saw that one. And so now the Trojans coughing up a power play here with the two goal lead and Carver now battling down low with some extracurriculars going on. Right in front of Noah Carver there. And so, tempers flaring after the whistle. Officials still having a conversation there as head coach Rick Zamo putting fresh legs out on the ice for this face off. Still a minute 47 on the penalty to Gavin Burris. As the Trojans battle in front of the St. Xavier bench. Here's a delayed penalty right there, right in front of the benches. Didn't even have the puck. And he's not happy with that at all. But it was right in front of the St. Xavier bench as some words being flown in the direction of Brady Smith. Or will it be a penalty? Indeed, it will not. They have decided not to. Well, it will. Yes, it's up on the board, number 39 in the box. And so that even things up at Four on four, a bit of a gift for the Trojans as the loose puck bounces off the stick of Smith. Here come the Bombers back the other way. Big high shot off the high glass. Back into the near side. Scooped up by Andrew Condy. Can't get it. Loose puck knocked away at the last second by Schumann. He'll play it up the near wing. Eight minutes and 48 seconds to go. As that one will make its way all the way down inside the... St. Xavier's own, off the half boards, back to the point. Held on by Condi, but not for long. Here come the Bombers deep inside the zone. Big check into the corners. The puck played. Again, in the slot in front of Carver, knocked away at the last second. Davis trying to get a piece of it back on the half boards. Finally does, before it's sent back into the corner. Up at the point. Knocked away at the last second by Smith, and that'll force the Bombers to retreat back at their own line before it's scooped up by the Trojans. 
Centering feed, rink wide, icing signaled and icing the call now with 8.05 to go. And I'm not sure if the Bombers realized that they were still even strength with all of the penalties that we've had. It's still four on four for another 21 seconds. And that is what caused the icing. And just like that, from the slot, here's Berghart. Centering feed, tried to feed Lombardo down low, but he couldn't connect as it works its way back into the near corner. Played up the wing. Here's Berghart. Shot low, turned aside by Rusnik. He'll send it back to the point as Burris returns to the ice and the Trojans have a man advantage for 25 seconds in counting as that one is gonna go up and out of play into the protective mesh for a stoppage now with seven minutes and 33 seconds to go. And so they'll try to figure out exactly what line combination they want to put in. And right off the draw, this one picked up by the Trojans retreating back just shallow inside their own zone. Or this one sent all the way down free of charge, no icing, or is it icing? They're gonna say it was, as the back official Dregel Kildop had the call. And so they'll bring the face off all the way back inside the Trojans end. And so on the six side of Noah Carver, that one's just gonna squeak just past the crease. As it's scooped up by the Trojans, as the Bombers return to full strength. Back to five on five hockey. So work it down low. On the half boards, finally picked up by Lombardo. Stretch pass out to center ice and across the line. Low work that shot in. Turned aside by Rusnik, out from behind the net. Here's Lombardo, or will it, as a whistle coming from behind the play. Darrell Kindop has a penalty from the far corner. He saw it the entire way down the ice. And it looks like Gavin Burris might be on the receiving end of this one. Another matching minor situation from behind the play. High sticking for both players is Gavin Burris in the box as well as Henry Dawes for St. Xavier. It's gonna be matching minors with 6.55 to go here in this third period. Trojan still with a four to two lead over the Bombers. Physicality certainly not de-escalating with the score. And here come the Bombers back inside the Trojans and a shot, that one hit off the side of the post. Carver got a brief glimpse of it, but here come the Trojans back out to center. With a head of steam as Smith. Shot just wide off the end boards. He'll work it back to Sexton, held on by Campbell at the line, as that one escapes back out to neutral ice. Big check in front of the penalty box, as another big open ice check knocks it loose momentarily in the shot block down low, and finally, we are gonna get another stoppage. This time it looks like for an injured player in front of the penalty box. As you see head athletic trainer Kira Dorney Sprinting onto the ice surface to take a look at Mitchell Frodke as he got knocked down during that sequence as he heads off to the bench to be taken a look at by the head athletic trainer Kira Dorning, presented by Premier Health, the official sports medicine provider of Troy Trojans Athletics. Kira's been a member of this athletic program for I believe six years now. And certainly the Trojans in excellent hands. And so the faceoff will remain in the neutral zone in front of head coach Rick Zabo's bench. 6-11 to go here in the third period. And right off the faceoff, this one stopped up into the near side as it's scooped up by the Bombers. They'll play it down low inside Trojan territory. And around. 
And for AJ Scalise, is able to force that one in, getting her first shift of the night. Played it back, loose puck down low. As Scalise's shot from the point, knocked down low. Played it again off the far side. Here come the Bombers across the line. They'll work it in with a big cheer from the crowd in section 29 as that one turned out from behind the net. Loose puck again, knocked away at the last second, but there's a shot, played just wide at Carver. He got the stick on it as it makes its way down low into the corner. On this outlet pass, here comes Will Barnes. Chips it up into the bench and nearly getting a piece of head coach Rick Sabo in the process. Perhaps a little bit of ice awareness goes a long way when you know there's no glass where you want to bounce it off. The only thing that was there was his head coach's face. Unfortunately, the old goaltender was able to make yet another top level save. And so as they play it back around on the near side. Here's a head of steam out through center ice. Smith couldn't get much on it. Big open ice check right there. Knocked it away at the last second. As that one picked up by Sexton, but offsides is the call. And offsides will stop the clock now with four minutes and 46 seconds to go. Here in this third and final period of regulation, the Trojans holding on to that big four to two lead over the Bombers. And right from the drop. Picked up by St. Xavier as they'll work it inside the Trojans end. And again, picked back up by Smith. Big centering feed all the way down inside St. Xavier territory as the icing is waved off. Here's Cooper Sexton to play it out from behind the net. Sexton tries on this outlet pass, but has his pocket picked as this one's gonna be flipped high up into the air back to the Trojan blue line, where it's picked up by Ian Francis Knott. Three points already for tonight for Francis Knott as the Trojans force this one back down low inside the Bombers corner. Played along the dashers, fresh from the bench. Is Condi, loose puck! Just trying to pick the corner, nobody was there. And they'll wrap this one around the Dashers again to the near side as it works its way all the way back inside Trojan territory for Andrew Condi. Sent it rink wide. Now for Sexton. Almost intercepted as he gets thrown into the Dashers, but he's able to get it deep inside the Bombers territory and the opening pass again turned aside as both teams continue pressuring. Delayed penalty coming against Troy as Rusnak leaves the bench. Leaves the ice for the bench. That one's going to be touched up. And yet another high-sticking penalty against Cooper Sexton. And now he's got 10. And head coach Rick Zabo is not happy with what he's seeing right now. A 10-minute misconduct penalty now assessed to Cooper Sexton for unsportsmanlike conduct. As referee Jarrell Kindop going to have a chat with head coach Rick Zabo at the bench. That is the second high-sticking penalty that Cooper Sexton has gotten from behind the play. And of course, the unsportsmanlike conduct penalty did not do him any favors. As a timeout now on the ice. And as we uh, see number 10, Ethan Biddle, Skating into the penalty box. He will serve the two-minute minor for Cooper Sexton. That two-minute minor for high sticking was the initial call that stopped the play from behind. Wasn't even part of the initial play. Darrell Kindoff, the referee, saw it, stopped the play after a lengthy delay when goaltender Noah Carver touched up the puck and it was when Cooper Sexton skated into the penalty box. He had a few choice words for the referee and slammed the gate in protest. And that was enough to get a 10 minute misconduct penalty for unsportsmanlike conduct. And his night is done. 28 to 22, the shots on goal in favor 
of the Trojans as this third period they have taken the lead and extended it despite some setbacks like we just saw. A two minute minor is up on the board and so the Trojans will be shorthanded again with the faceoff coming back inside the Trojans end. This will be taken on the glove side of Noah Carver. And so it looks like it's going to be Gavin Burris to take the faceoff. And right from the draw, there's a shot. That one's blocked out in front. Knocked away by Condi at the last minute. And now here come the Bombers to chase back inside their own zone. Out of their own corner. They'll play it up the near wing, back inside Trojan territory. Still with the loose puck. There's Andrew Condi. Gives it back for Colin Berghardt, who sends it 185 feet the other way, free of charge. Two minutes and 57 seconds left in this third period as the Trojans will tag up on the offensive line and continue pressuring inside the St. Xavier zone on this breakout attempt with the power play. Out to center ice under pressure and across the Trojan line. In on side, there's a shot! Save made by Carver. And some extracurriculars there. He got a poke, a slash on the goaltender. And that was Jack Davis. And he's going to the penalty box, and now he's got a misconduct penalty. And so, just like what we saw in the previous sequence, a two minute minor for slashing for number 25, Jack Davis, and a 10 minute misconduct. And that'll even things up four on four, which helps the Trojans with the face-off coming all the way back inside the St. Xavier zone. And so a big face-off here, even strength hockey. And so the face-off will be taken by Brady Smith. One back by the Bombers out of their own zone with a head of steam. Stopping at the line in on side. That one back tries to drive the net. Loose puck knocked away out of the crease by Berghardt. Helping the goaltender out as they regroup back out at center ice and try it again. Even strength hockey for another 43 seconds to go. As at the point, this one right back. In for St. Xavier. Working it on the far side. Centering pass on this outlet through the middle. And that cost the Trojans an opportunity momentarily. But here they come back across the line in on side as that one bounces back into the far corner. Centering pass. Nobody was there but the Bombers. And now it's a one-on-one -on -one the other way. High shot, glove down easily by Carver, and that'll stop the clock now with 1.41 to go here in the third period. And so yet another big faceoff. 10 seconds remaining on the two minute penalty to Cooper Sexton, the initial call. He'll be in the box for a while with his 10 minute misconduct. It'll be Biddle to step out onto the ice as the Trojans now racing the other way as Lombardo. He had Francis not on his wing as the Trojans return to full strength. Biddle skates back to the bench for fresh legs. As well, work that one back into the near corner, turned aside, picked back up by Berghardt. Held on at the point. Still trying to control the puck. We'll work it free as Berghardt is able to force that one deep inside the 
St. Xavier zone, 27 seconds in counting on the St. Xavier penalty. As they'll work it back out to center ice. Off this puck. Passed it back inside the zone. Under a minute now to go here in regulation. As they'll work it through. There's a big opportunity for the Bombers. Short-handed as they expire the penalty, we return to five-on-five -five hockey with the Trojans deep inside St. Xavier territory. Here's Brady Smith back into the far corner. 25 seconds in counting, sets up a shot. Burkhardt shoots, scores! And just like that, it is a three goal lead for the Trojans. And so Colin Burghardt getting credited for the goal. Bohorn. Just like that, a uh, second victory in as many nights for the Trojans as they will pull off a thrilling 5-2 win on home ice against the St. Xavier Bombers. And what I would consider a very successful Second game in as many nights, uh, especially since it is first responder night. As the Trojans skate off the ice, it is a final score. Troy 5, St. Xavier Bombers 2. We'll be back in action as the Trojans host the... Bishop Watterson Eagles tomorrow night right here on home ice. That game starting at 5.45 p.m. And we'll have that for you right here on Trojan Hockey TV as part of Troy, Tro Troy Ohio TV on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. For one final time, for our entire crew, John Wyatt, Rhino, Lily, and Riley, as well as Roger Mumpower downstairs, I am JT Zamo. Your Trojans beat the Bombers 5-2. to two.